I think people just want their money back. If you got a speeding ticket in a school zone, you may be getting a refund depending on where it happened. And there's a new carnival crew. Find out what movie inspired their costumes. And a change is coming in your forecast, plus a farewell to a beloved Loyola staff member. Car break-ins have been an epidemic for the city of New Orleans. Find out what the city is doing to try and stop these crimes. Good afternoon, I'm Jade Myers. And I'm Lily Cummings. Thank you for joining us. New Orleans ended 2019 with over 6,000 car break-ins. This is a 57% increase in the total number of car break-ins since last year, according to the city's crime statistics. Reporter Tess Rowland has the latest on how the city is pushing for solutions. NOPD Superintendent Sean Ferguson said that NOPD is just as aggravated and fed up with the increase of car break-ins as residents are. While he said that his department has no specific plans at this time to combat the issues, each NOPD is, district has been creating plans of their own and Ferguson is pleased with the numerous arrests being made. We spoke to one uptown resident who was still on the edge after his vehicle had been broken into three times this past month. actually just found some glass. <laughs> Dustin Walker is still finding pieces of glass in his new truck. His windows were smashed in. Not one, not two, but three times. Yeah, it's a little disheartening. The first incident occurred when he parked around the corner from his home, then at Pan American Stadium, then a third time directly in front of his home. It's roughly around $300 e each time. His ring alarm caught it all on camera. The video shows a team of two get out of a sedan. They begin to look inside Dustin's truck and in seconds they smash the driver's side window. It's enough to make Dustin lose sleep at night. I feel violated, obviously. You know, that's your personal, that's your, your vehicle. You know, you've worked hard, you pay for it. Um, so that sense of somebody's going through my personal stuff. And Dustin isn't alone. In 2019, New Orleans saw 5,900 total car break-ins with only 9% resulting in arrests. Of those arrested, 47% were juveniles, most likely trying to make quick cash. City Councilman Jay Banks says he is sympathetic to the issue because he's been a victim himself. No one is immune to it. I mean, my car has blue lights, um, big old city car. That didn't stop some knucklehead from breaking into it. He said he's willing to do whatever it takes to stop these crimes, but there's no easy fix just yet. For now, NOPD has added more patrols to the streets. It went from being a nuisance to now it's an epidemic. Dustin is now in the market for a new home with gated parking. In the meantime, he's considering keeping the truck unlocked with the battery removed in hopes his windows won't be smashed a fourth time. Tess Rowland, Pack News. Ferguson also said that these crimes are often committed by repeat offenders, so NLPD will be working with the criminal justice system to stop the revolving door. Reporting live from police headquarters, Tess Rowland, PAC News. The New Orleans City, but city Council Budget Committee says the Hard Rock Hotel collapse will cost the city $11.6 million. Here's the breakdown. Damages total $2.8 million. These include Rampart Street repairs, repairs to the streetcar line, and roof repairs for the Senior Theater. Changes to RTA operations and other lost revenue totaled nearly $5 million. Paying personnel cost the city around $2 million, and other public safety costs totaled $1.7 million. And New Orleans Mayor LaToya Cantrell has come under fire for owing the IRS almost $100,000 in federal taxes. Reporter Aaron Snodgrass joins us live from the Maroon. Aaron, what's going on? Cantrell owes more than $95,000 in unpaid taxes over the last six years, according to liens filed against her Broadmoor home. These liens are on top of almost $30,000 in additional liens that were revealed during the 2017 mayoral election. 
And what has been the mayor's <coughs> response to all of this? Uh, on penalties and interest, but has refused to comment any further, saying the issue was, quote, complicated and a personal matter. She tweeted that she and her family have been dealing with these financial challenges for years and called the publicity of the news very painful. She's also said she and her husband are working with a personal tax lawyer to remedy the situation. And what has been the public's resp response to this, Erin? Uh, we are seeing people getting angry. People are saying, why should I have to pay my taxes if the leader of my city isn't? Uh, the Advocate has published an editorial encouraging Contral to set a good example by paying her taxes. And I spoke with Loyola political science professor Sean Kane, who provided some insight into people's anger. But from the perspective of how the public views public officials as people who are not quite like them, um, it makes sense that they would be uh, upset with that that somebody who is in a position of power who earns the taxpayers money that's how she gets paid as mayor um, would have a tax problem that cannot be resolved that easily quickly and despite the controversy Contrell has said she should be judged based on her work in office not her back taxes a very challenging situation we'll be sure to keep an eye on it thank you Aaron Mismanaged traffic cameras have some drivers looking forward to re a refund from the city. Anam Siddiqui has the latest. I think people just want their money back. A new report by the Inspector General blasted the city of New Orleans for issuing drivers speeding tickets in school zones when schools were not in session or the zones did not exist. Caroline Molina is one out of the 6,000 people who paid speeding tickets even though she did no crime. One was like almost $200, the other one was like $300. The report suggests from 2008 to 2019, the city has collected more than $730,000 worth of payment. To take care of the problem, the Inspector General Office recommends one agency take over and begin issuing refunds. Melina received two tickets back in August when schools were still out on summer break. If you really think about it, like those cameras aren't working properly. Like they're there to protect children, like when it's regular school time or school hours, but they're not working properly. So essentially, they like are messing us over. I felt betrayed. The report shows the city failed to keep track when schools opened closed or changed locations, meaning some cameras were ticketing drivers for no reason. I reached out to the general inspector office and they declined to comment. Anam Siddiqui, PAC News. And you can find that full report online on the New Orleans Office of Inspector General website. The CDC says there is no need to worry about the coronavirus spreading in the U.S. In a tweet, the CDC says, quote, it does not recommend using face masks the general public is safe as long as you're washing your hands and covering your face when you cough. There are 11 confirmed coronavirus cases in the U.S. And there's been a delay in the results of the Iowa caucus. The caucus is a strong indicator for how a presidential candidate will fare in the election. Iowa state officials say there's an issue with Monday's results. This is being run by the state political party and by volunteers. So no surprise that we'd be running into some problems. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. The fictional sub-Saharan African country of Wakanda has been made popular to the release of the 2018 Marvel film Black Panther. As Cody Downey reports, one crew made it their mission to bring this world of Wakanda to life. Come see us in Chewbacca's 2020 and give us a Wakanda forever. The women of Wakanda are an all-female Mardi Gras crew inspired by the 2018 Marvel film Black Panther. Captain Wankita Jackson says the group came to be at a get-together at a friend's house while discussing Mardi Gras and the then-upcoming film. Um, she thought it would be a good idea to have, um, a fun idea to have a, a, a crew that's just 
Dora Milaje or uh, who are the, the women warriors of Black Panther. And then we just thought bigger than that and said, how about we just have a whole crew just dedicated to the women of Wakanda in whatever form they were in. For Wankita, one of the reasons why the group was made was to serve as an outlet for women of color to celebrate Mardi Gras in a unique and creative way. But yeah, we uh, you know wanted to make sure we had a, a space for women of color who don't necessarily see themselves as creative, but wanted to take part in this non-traditional type Mardi Gras celebration. As a part of this year's parade, the crew made a spaceship that was used to house a DJ playing African pop music known as Afrobeats. She's going to be carried on that um, through the streets, so you'll hear our music pretty loud. The women of Wakanda specialty throws include crowns and handmade air. Though she hasn't always been the biggest fan of parades, Wankita's sister and co-captain Jalissa um, became so a part of the crew for, for some of the benefits. I've gotten to meet um, so many great ladies that are involved in so many different things. For these women, being able to get involved in Mardi Gras in their own way is why they do it. We just wanted to get in on the action. Cody Downey, Pack News. If you are interested in joining the women of Wakanda, you can find them on Facebook and go to our story on Pack News to find the link. And with carnival season in full swing, the big parades start rolling this weekend. On Friday, the crew of Boheme hits the Marigny and the French Quarter. The marching parade starts at the corner of Dauphine Street and se at 7 p.m. and ends at the Joy Theater. And a crowd favorite, Crew de Vue, rolls on Saturday. The parade is known for its political satire, pop culture references, and adult themes. Crew Delusion is set to follow. And we have beautiful skies right now, but will it continue this weekend? Find out next in our weekly forecast. Back to you, Lester. Thanks, Taylor. And then our final story of the night. Maroon has been ranked as one of the top student newspapers in the nation by the Princeton Review. I'm Anam Siddiqui, here with your weather forecast for Tuesday, February 4th. While yesterday was a beautiful Monday, the rest of the week is not looking so good. Right now, it's 64 degrees with winds at 7 miles per hour. The rain will begin tonight with a cold front coming in. Rain chances start today, but keep the umbrella on hand for tomorrow as well. There are possible severe weather threats for Wednesday. The chances of rain will go up in the afternoon up to 90%. Around 6 p.m. is when the thunderstorm should roll in. For the rest of the week, there is still a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain on Thursday, which will bring in a cold front dropping us to the 50s. But the weekend is looking pretty. Friday is going to be sunny with a high of 62. And Saturday still ha will have a high of 68 with winds up to 10 miles per hour. And the sun continues to shine on Sunday with a high of 68. The clouds will roll back on Monday with a high of 74. Again, don't forget to pack your umbrella and rain jacket because it's not looking nice for tomorrow night. Back to you guys. Pelicans fans, they're going to want to bring their umbrellas if they're heading out tonight to the Smoothie King Center. Pelicans versus Bucks tonight, and Loyola won their first championship of 2020. I'll have more on that. Stick with us. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, 
your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Tomorrow, Chiefs fans plan on packing downtown Kansas City with their Super Bowl parade. The Chiefs earned their second title in franchise history after taking down the 49ers in Super Bowl 54. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes spends some time with Mickey Mouse in Disney World after nailing three touchdowns for the championship. This is video of those scores. The 24-year-old ran the ball to the end zone on this one. He also threw two darts in the end zone, racking up a total of 286 yards passing. The Chiefs won 31 to 20. Mahomes walked away the youngest player in league history to have a Super Bowl and regular season MVP award. Now, the last time the Chiefs were world champions was 50 years ago exactly. It happened right here in New Orleans. The Chiefs battled the Minnesota Vikings for their title in Super Bowl IV at Old Tulane Stadium. Kansas City won 23 to 7. It also marked the first time New Orleans hosted the big game. Now, the Pelicans welcomed the best team in the league on their home court tonight. New Orleans hopes they'll fare better against the Milwaukee Bucks than they did last Sunday against the Rockets. Number one overall pick Zion Williamson had a great game, bringing in a double-double with 21 points, 10 rebounds. But overall, the team suffered 24 turnovers, which led to 29 Houston points. The Pels had a chance to come back, but hit 10, I'm sorry, 0 for 9 beyond the three-point line in the final quarter of play. They also let former MVP James Harden go off 40 points. Pels lost 107 to 109. The Pelicans will play tonight in the Smoothie King Center. Milwaukee has the best record in the NBA, 42-7. Tip-off will be at 6.30. New Orleans eyes that number eight seed that the Grizzlies hold right now. They have some times before playoffs, but the Pels don't want the Trailblazers, the Spurs, to get any more ahead. Right now, the Pelicans stand five games back with a 20-30 overall record. They have won six out of the past ten games, and Tankathon.com lists New Orleans with the easiest record in the entire NBA. Now, I don't know what you were doing when you were 19 years old, but I doubt you were the face of a professional basketball franchise. But that's the reality Zion Williamson faces. The Duke standout had high expectations since he was drafted number one overall. The hype has built up since he made his NBA debut late, last back month, late in the season last month. But throughout his first six games, some analysts say his stat sheet proves he could still win Rookie of the Year. Now, here's a look at that stat sheet. The rookie averages 19 and a half points per game. He also brings in just over eight rebounds per game, nearly two assists, and shoots more than 61% from the field. All solid numbers for Rookie of the Year contention. Both cheer and dance teams wrap up conference play on a high note. Here's more about the Loyola's first championship of 2020. Loyola's dance team celebrated their fourth straight conference championship, an accolade coaches say they rightfully earned. They are literally the kids that call you late at night, the kids that bug you early in the morning. <laughs> but they're the kids that do all the hard work. The Wolfpack also landed four dancers to the all-conference team. All the times that we spend in practice every morning um, have paid off. And Lauren King was named best all-around female. <laughs> the pack hopes to win more awards with regionals around the corner. It's a confidence booster, definitely. Um, it makes us continue to keep working, and um, we want to fill this whole entire gym, so. <laughs> Loyola gets to celebrate another dance conference win and multiple awards from the cheer team. Autumn, a tough. Yeah. Anna LeBlanc joined Samantha Conway on the all-conference team. The cheer squad landed in third place for the second year in a row, but they feel more confident as their season continues. Last year, I felt like we really built off of conference and kept getting stronger and stronger. But I feel like we're in a really good place this year to really make moves at regionals. So. Both teams move on with support from Wolfpack fans. We know how hard they work to cheer on our basketball team, and so watching everyone out here supporting them and cheering them on, it was surreal. Regionals will be February 27th in Tennessee. It's fantastic that they went on their home court. That is, that is really great. Out of both teams, nine athletes to the all-academic team. That's, that's pretty insane. Wow, that's great, too, to bring home all of those awards for Loyola. And those flips they were doing? I know. I could never. never I, all I could life. do is, like, the wobble. Remember oh. that one? <laughs> I remember the wobble. Remember I do remember one? the wobble. That's I can't my dance. Stint. Yeah. Dance? Not even I like can't a dance. Fortnite dance? I, can't, I could snap. Finger snap. <laughs> I can't oh dance. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, we all have our talents. We all have our talents. We all have <laughs> yeah. our talents.
All right, after working for four decades, a local university honors one of their own in New Orleans style. We'll take a look at the celebration. Stay with us. special person on Thursday. And I was there for his farewell. Take a look. It means a hell of a lot to me. That's Ricardo Torregano, or Ricky, as most people around Loyola know him, talking about a party held in his honor. Second lines, king cake, lots of hugs, and a medal to celebrate 41 years of working for Sodexo at Loyola. On Thursday, Mr. Ricky didn't have to worry about picking up things that were left behind, only celebrating the legacy he left behind. Like kind legacy and like joyous spirit will live on throughout all of our community members. He's like a sunshine. Every day is a fond memory. Let that enthusiasm and that fun loving spirit of yours shine and, and, and show off and bleed on everybody wherever you go. And that's just the reason Mr. Ricky is leaving. Love, to be closer to his wife in Birmingham, Alabama, after six years of long distance. So Mr. Ricky will be working for Sodexo there now, but says, what will you miss most? The people. Yeah. The people. Lily Cummings, PAC News. Now, Ricky not only worked here at Loyola, but at Xavier and Tulane as well. In Birmingham, he will do the same thing, working at the University of Alabama at Birmingham and Samford. That's incredible. Loyola really just has some special people on staff. We're really fortunate to have that. We are. Of course, yeah. Definitely. 40 years? That's, That's 41 hard work. years, 40 years. And he had done six years of long distance with his wife, commuting to Birmingham wow. every weekend, taking the train. Oh I mean, goodness. can you say relationship goals? <laughs> That's I'm true. I'm happy he's that reuniting with his wife. In the making. Yeah. I know, I know. We're very fortunate to have him. Thank you for watching PAC News. We'll see you right back here next week.